This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2448, How You Are Feeling Right Now is Valid, by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. And I'm Justin Mollick. This is not your typical podcast. There are no interviews, just a short daily show so we can start the day off on the right foot. So let's keep this short and get right to it as we optimize your life. How You Are Feeling Right Now is Valid by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. My six-year-old is a big ball of feelings right now. There's a lot of emotion being processed in her little body. A clue to one of her big feelings right now is her distress when I leave the house, which, of course, is only happening for food and exercise. She doesn't want me to go, and she doesn't exactly know why. She's scared. So I've told her this. Honey, you don't need to be scared because mommy will be back soon, but it's okay that you are scared. What I haven't told her is that most people I know are scared at the moment during the pandemic and that I think she's probably also feeling the fear in the air. So how are you feeling right now? My daughter is feeling scared and loads of other emotions too, but I'm wondering, how are you feeling? Anxious, tired, or maybe happy and content? What I know from conversations with friends and family is that many of you are channeling your inner Jekyll and Hyde. One day you're feeling pretty good, maybe extra grateful for the little things like coffee, and the next day you're crying in the garden shed where no one can find you. Here's the thing, are you ready for it? All your feelings and emotions about your situation, about humanity's situation, are valid and okay. All of them, not some of them, all of them not just the fear and worry, also the envy or resentment. Here's why I think they are valid, which is a different thing to them being true. We'll get there in a minute. They're valid because they are your feelings. They belong to you. And dearest friend, you are valid. Please don't feel something and then decide that you shouldn't be feeling that way. You're allowed to feel however you feel. And as a gentle reminder, You are allowed to feel, full stop, pertinent to those of us who have spent years numbing instead of feeling. So this brings me neatly to the next thing. What to do with all these feelings? Because they can still suck and be downright horrible to have. Sometimes I feel like my emotions are a heavy rock sitting on my chest. In order to move that rock and breathe a little easier again, these things are helpful. Number one, Fact check. This might seem irrelevant when I've just told you that all your feelings are valid, so why fact check, right? Well, hear me out. Here's a feeling I've had before. I am unloved. Is it true? Nope, not at all true, but that did not change how I felt. But checking the facts was helpful and gets the rock moving. Current situation? I feel helpless. This is both true and untrue. While I'm helpless to help those who are already sick, I can help prevent the spread of the disease by practicing good hygiene and by staying at home. Okay, let's move on. Number two, feel them. Feel it out. This is especially for those of us who have harbored a habit of doing other things instead of feeling. You know what I mean, right? Like opening that bottle of wine or scrolling endlessly on Instagram or running for two hours or baking three dozen hot cross buns. We have feelings, especially the big, heavy ones, for a reason. Yes, some of them, like fear, are for good reason, staying alive reasons. Those ones are tied to the older bits of our brains that helped us escape saber tooths. But the main reason I think we have feelings is because they make us human. So feel them out in all their awful, extraordinary, excruciating painfulness, and even just for a minute or two. Number three, be kind to your feelings. Once you felt that fear or joy for a bit, take it one step further and be kind to it. Treat that feeling like you would a stranger who needs your help. Invite it in to stay as long as it needs. Your feelings are a part of you. So being kind to them is a form of self-care. Obviously, you'd rather get a facial than invite fear in for a sit down and a chat, but this kind of self-care is paramount to growth. Feelings teach us. So one of the best things you can do through all of this is to ask your feelings a question. What are you trying to teach me today? And yes, you can both ask that question and then skip the class. 
That's a normal part of the process. Finally, find a way to process these feelings. And number four, sweat them out. Feelings get stored in our body. Finding a release for them is a really important and good thing right now. I do a lot of processing, both implicit and explicit, on my runs and long bike rides. There's something about moving the body that helps us to move the feelings, move that rock that sits on our chest. Over the past few months, I've been experiencing PTSD symptoms, and one of the symptoms is a bizarre catatonic state. I feel frozen in time, unable to move, muscles stiff, heart racing, stuck. Opposite action is a sometimes helpful tool that I use when I get stuck. Moving my body does something to shift my feelings. You don't need to run like I do, but a walk, even around your house or some gentle yoga, will shift and ease your big emotions. That's a wrap, but here are the main points. Your feelings are valid. You are valid. To help you process your feelings, you can A, fact check them, B, feel them, C, be kind to them, and D, sweat them out. You just listened to the post titled, How You Are Feeling Right Now is Valid by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. And thank you to Emma. Being kind to our feelings is a big one and probably easier said than done, but something worth working on. In my experience, and I'm sure we've had an author on this show talk about this before too, is that the more you try to push away a feeling, the more magnified it becomes, even if on the surface it seems to disappear. It just gets buried and grows even more like a seed in soil. But being kind to it, letting it happen, tends to have the opposite effect. Now there's a fine line here because if we're talking about something like anxiety and we want to be kind to that anxiety, like accept it, talk about it, read about it as much as possible, focus on it and love it, well, it might not work out as expected. It might sound like great advice on the surface, but hyper-focusing on something like anxiety will also probably have an unintended effect of obsession and possibly more anxiety. Instead, it's probably more useful to be somewhere in the middle, not obsessed on either end, as in not obsessed about being kind to our anxiety and talking about it or learning about it all the time, but also not obsessed with trying to push it away anytime it creeps up. And as I always say, if it's something that's debilitating and really just getting in the way, then getting help from a licensed professional is always recommended. But I'll do it for today here on OLD. Thank you for listening and sticking around until the end. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow, as usual, where your optimal life awaits.